Well, hey everyone, it's Mike Shaw here, your Nightscape professor. And the purpose of this tutorial is just to go through some ideas and tips about how to find the Milky Way at different times of the year. And the reason that this is so exciting is, of course, it's Milky Way season again. It's February of 2018, and we're heading into the time of the year when the bright galactic core of the Milky Way starts to peak above the eastern horizon in the early morning. So what we have here just is a, uh, a shot of the uh, summer Milky Way showing the um, galactic core region way above the horizon so we can see it nice and clearly. Right about where I'm showing with my cursor is uh, hidden in this region. There's a super massive black hole with this huge gravitational pull. And what that does is that's the anchor for our whole Milky Way galaxy. And the solar system is spinning around this thing. Everything that you see in the night sky pretty much is moving uh, rotating around this supermassive black hole. Just like the sun anchors the planets in the solar system, this black hole holds everything in place in the Milky Way galaxy. And in fact, that's the reason this whole region is so bright and there's so many billions of stars here is that they are attracted to this, to this black hole. So anyway, this is the type of shot we're talking about. And let's just take a step back and look at the overall structure of the Milky Way. I've borrowed this image from NASA. This is um, not one of my <laughs> images. And this one was um, from their Astronomy Picture of the Day, APOD, A-P-O-D, Astronomy Picture of the Day. Great website. Check it out. Every day it's free. They put up a beautiful image, state-of-the-art stuff from yes, every facet of astronomy you can think of. Key point here is this central band of the Milky Way. The Milky Way is basically like a giant pizza in terms of its structure. It's super flat and thin and round and uh the reason the th thing we're mostly interested in a lot of times is the central banks there's just so much stuff in here you can see all these gas nebula there's star clusters and these dust clouds and all kinds of cool stuff like that but going back to right where i'm pointing here right to the center of this uh, image in fact is the galactic core and you can see why it's so interesting there's just so much stuff there there's these dark there's a pipe nebula um, these uh, different other, you know, gas nebula that uh, litter the uh, the um, the galaxy. These guys right here are actually oh, this one. These guys, this guy. Uh, these are the a few, the, a few <laughs> some of the few objects that lie outside of the Milky Way galaxy. All of these other stars are confined to the Milky Way, and in fact. Um, pretty much every time you go out at night and look up at the sky, what you're looking at are stars from the Milky Way. So it can be a little confusing when people are talking about shooting the Milky Way. It's like, where are you shooting the stars? Are you shooting the central band? Are you shooting this galactic core region? What, what exactly is it? And I think what most of us are talking about is this bright galactic core region, which is right here. It's the galactic core region of the central band of the Milky Way galaxy. So there's that kind of, you know, just ways of breaking it down. Um, and this thing, as I you know, may have mentioned, is not always visible uh, throughout the year. And in fact, th roughly this region right here, I mean, these, these gas clouds, we don't see those ever in the Northern Hemisphere. So this region over here is Orion. We do see Orion, um, but this region we don't. So anyway, it's just something to think about. And so the question then is, well, you know, if we don't see it all year, when do we see it? And um, I put this handy dandy little chart together for you right here. This is actually from my recent book, The Complete Guide to Landscape Astrophotography. And you can get it on Amazon. I'd be happy to sign it for you and everything if you want to talk about that. So shoot me an email. Anyway, um, this is a chart showing, you know, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. across the top here. And then on the left, we have from January to December. So this is pretty much the night. And what these open rectangles represent are the periods of darkness. As you can see, January, it's dark all night, you know, from at least, what were, you know, 4, 4.35 till after 6 a.m. But then, you know, June is a relatively short night, and it gets, uh, you know, full darkness much later. And uh, that ends, of course, much earlier. So, and then these, these uh, black regions are where the Milky Way galactic core, the galactic Milky Way's galactic core is above the horizon. So what's interesting here, the whole point of this is, as wonderful as all this is, look at the, how the time changes. So right now in February, like I say, look, it's only for a brief period of time before sunrise. So what happens is it just basically clears the horizon and then the, sun get, the sky gets too bright and it disappears. Next month in March, um, this is let's say during a new moon phase where we can actually see it. In March, um, 
it gets above the horizon a little bit earlier so we can see it for longer uh, before the sun starts to get too bright and then in fact actually wipes it out and same sort of thing and it actually sets and then same sort of thing here in april and then in may and then june and july all the way through till october november when um it's setting uh it's setting um basically right after sunset uh just a short time relatively speaking after sunset or after it gets dark so anyway just is something to bear in mind is that as you go through the year the period of time when you can see it it starts off in the morning wee morning hours and it gets progressively earlier in the night until it's in the late evening and then finally the early evening until it disappears again so with that as a background then um i thought i'd just show you this one uh image that i use when i give talks that uh, describes how this works and um or, or why this is the way it is and the reason for that is just that the Earth is rotating around the sun. So what we have here, this yellow ball, is the sun. This is totally not to scale at all. Um, but the orientation of the Milky, of the solar system, of the Earth's rotation around the sun, and that of the solar system, for that matter, is roughly correct. Is at 90 degrees to this plane of the Milky Way, which is kind of an interesting thing. And the point being is here, look, in the summertime, in June, July, August, the Earth is over here. And it takes up, you know, six months later for the Earth to come all the way over here. So that's December. Six months later, it's back in June. And the point being is at night in June, when you're on Earth opposite the sun, you're looking out in this direction, this is what you see. You see all this stuff, the galactic core. But then in December at night, right, makes sense. You're looking in the other direction. You're looking out here. So you don't see the galactic core. And in fact, the sun blocks your view of this galactic core. You're looking, if you're on this side of the Earth in December, it's noon and you're certainly not seeing any stars. So this, roughly speaking, is why the view of the Milky Way and everything that we see in the night sky changes continuously throughout the year. And so in, or, in, in order for you to really um, pinpoint how to get this whole thing to work, I thought what I'd do here is show you, um, let's just quit out of here for a second, is to show you this free program, Stellarium. And can't say enough good things about it. It's a wonderful program. It's free. It's got so many great features. This is what you get when you open it up. It's stellarium.org, S-T-E-L-L-A-R-I-U-M.org. And you can drag, you know, different directions. There's the sun. There's west. Uh, this is some simulated field, in, I believe, in France. This is east. Uh, you can scroll in. You can scroll out. I'm going to zoom. Whoops, you can make it into a fisheye. I'm going to zoom moderately in something like this. And then down here, or over here, I should say, you have the date and time window. And so what you can see is it automatically defaults to St. Paul. You can, Minnesota, which is where I am right now. You can change that. It's an easy thing to do. Um, and then the date and time, you can, you know, just by clicking on these little arrows, you can scroll through the time. So I'm going to, like right now it's showing it's quarter after four. So if I click and hold this minute time, then you can see that the time is advancing. Or I can, um, you know, click on the hour button and hour triangle or hour with uh, thing <laughs> triangle, and you can see how the time advances like this. And what I want to do now is this is um, 7:40 p.m. Let's turn this into a nice round number. So we'll just click this up to, let's say, eight o'clock. There we go. And we'll just hit the. Uh, there's a little. Um, whoops. There's a little uh, play button down here we're going to hit that and so we can stop that okay so now it's eight o'clock and what we're going to do now is go nine o'clock ten o'clock in fact let's zoom out here i want to show you how this works so at eight this is 6 p.m let's kind of zoom out so we can see a good amount of the night sky if we go to seven o'clock you can see this oops i want to make this a little brighter you can actually make out this faint band of the milky way it's a milky way arch just like it is in the summer except it's in the northern northeastern sky and that's because we're looking opposite the um galactic core so it's a lot dimmer but you can still make it out you know it's kind of a neat thing to see and a lot of times it's very worth worth shooting that this is at 7 p.m so uh you know you have a this is the winter triangle here whoops no here's the where's the winter triangle here's the winter triangle sirius betelgeuse and uh, procyon all right but now it's 7 p.m 8 p.m 9 p.m 10 p.m 11 p.m midnight 1 a.m 2 a.m 3 a.m here it comes 4 a.m 5 a.m here it is so at 6 a.m. it's starting to get kind of bright, but look, right here, this is what we're talking about. Right here in the uh, southeast, we have, this is the galactic core region right through here. Bam, there it is. And in fact, you can see here Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn, these all line up along with the Earth 
um, so you can really get a sense of how the planets are form this uh, plane around the uh, around the, the sun in the solar system. And what's interesting too, if I really zoom in here to um, uh, Saturn uh, and the Moon, you can see the Moon on the morning of the 11th. Uh, on February 11th, you can see the moon making this marvelous conjunction with Saturn right against the morning Milky Way. So this is definitely a shot that I'm going to try to get because that's a beautiful, uh, it's going to be a beautiful uh, sight to capture. Mars is also very bright now just owing to uh, where it is. And of course, Jupiter is always bright because it's just massive. But anyway, um, you know, and then as you go through the year, you can change the month. So here's March, April. Of course, at seven in the morning, it uh, starts to get pretty bright. So we can um, let's go back to th four in the morning, a April, May, June, July. And now you're starting to get into, um, you know, as I said, or as you saw earlier in that chart, this is uh, 11 o'clock at night in June. You can see where the Milky Way is and where is it right now in February. That happens uh, right before dawn, as you can see here. So it's kind of an interesting thing to put that together. So anyway, that is kind of it. Uh, please check out Stellarium. It's a great program, you know, for... Uh, planning these types of things. It's got loads of information you can, if you zoom in, you wanted to find out about the Alto, you just click on it like that and you get all this like amazing amount of information that um, it's really kind of interesting to learn about different things. Let's look at Saturn here. It's Saturn is a planet, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, as I say, this is Mike Shaw here, your night skate professor, urging you to get out, look up, and shoot your night skies. Take care, you guys.